Right, I'm gonna fit this in the garage. Gotta go. Hello, and welcome to Tweed's Garage, where in this episode, I'm gonna be installing a gantry crane in the garage. Yeah, okay, I'll admit it, I've hooked you in. Um, I haven't really installed the Thornycroft gantry crane in my garage, although that would be nice. Um, one, the garage isn't big enough, and two, I wouldn't have fitted it in my van. So um, what I did do, second best, was uh, build my own and install it into the garage. So uh, the whole plan came about because when I first took the engine out of the Riley, I used a... Uh, chain hoist that was just sort of slung over one of the roof joists to haul the engine out. Um, but then I had the luxury of space because I hadn't put all this machinery in the workshop. So um, unfortunately now, because I've got room in the workshop, I moved stuff out of here into the garage. So there's two motorbikes behind the Riley. There's uh, bits and pieces from the Riley in front of the Riley. So there's not a lot of space to move it. So I could have used a uh, engine hoist. I was offered one, which was nice, but the trouble is they're quite big, quite ungainly, and you need to be able, to, well, you need two people for a start, and you need to be able to sort of push it over the engine, you know, need somebody to push it over the engine whilst you control and, and lower the engine in. Um, and there's just not the space, you know, to, to start from the front of the car to moving the engine over the car and into the car. So. I thought, well, I can still use the uh, the chain chain hoist that I've got, but I need a track to run it on, and uh, and a carriage system. Um, so I don't. There's probably stuff out there, but I thought, no, I can make some. I've got some. Had some spare angle iron left over from a job um, sitting down by the side of the car. So I thought I would use uh, that. And uh, measuring it, cut in half, it gave me a track run of about just over four foot, which is uh, pretty good, you know, so it, it, it would allow me to get pick up the engine in front of the car and then um, over the car into the engine and then towards the gearbox. So that was the plan. Um, yeah, so this is a little video showing you how I went through it. I might sort of talk over it and uh, do a little bit of talk over um, because I shot all the, the video as I was going along with no, no sound. So buckle yourselves in, uh, here we go. So I needed a carriage, and uh, this is the carriage I made. Um, I'd, I'd sort of bought the bearings earlier on. I sort of had a little inkling I was going to do something like this. These were like 10 millimeter internal bearings, um, just little cheap roller bearings uh, sealed. And then the plan was to, uh, I was going to bolt these originally in, into some sort of assembly that I could hang the uh, chain hoist on the bottom of. So um, yeah, had the bearings, um, but then decided it would be better if they were mounted on shafts. So the first thing to do was turn up the two shafts. These, these, these were sort of steel rod that I had laying around. Um, yeah, and then turned up one side small enough to go through the plate with a little shoulder for the plates to butt up against when it was assembled. And then at the end of the shaft, turn down again for the bearings to uh, fit on. And I made them a little bit bigger than the bearings so that they could be push fitted on. The next thing to turn up was the uh, hanging pin for the uh, hook on the uh, chain hoist. And again, that was just a bit of black steel offcut that I had 
um, that I used to make that. The uh, steel plates um, are just a bit of uh, what that, two, three mil steel. Hang on, I'll measure. Yeah, three millimeter steel plate. Um, and these I got from our local steel supplier. Quite handy, they do shim packs. They do these steel shim packs, which is a selection of different size of flat plate, uh, sort of normally two of every size. And um, it is, yeah, it's proven to be really useful. So two of these plates made the uh, sides for the trolley. So turn the shafts up to the size. I did make a little mistake on this pin. I forgot to allow for uh, the, the plate thickness on, the, on one side for it to go through. But um, that was okay, just to put it back on the lathe, turn that down a bit. And I'd left the head quite large anyway, so there was enough meat on there to uh, turn, turn it down a little bit more. So then made, it, made everything a sort of tight push fit. So push press fitted it all together And then just with a couple of little tack welds on everything just to uh, hold them in place.
and then nice little coat of paint as it's been hung up in the ceiling and then uh, and then pushed on the four bearings which are a nice snug fit and I don't think they're going to go anywhere so um, yeah so that that was that The next thing to assemble was the uh, track. And as I said, I had a piece of angle iron for that, plus um, lots of offcuts laying around. So this is the plan. Uh, an angle iron track and then an end plate welded in the end with two holes to bolt into the first joist and then two intermediate supports holes drilled again to go into the joists um, this is so that the, the bearings can roll all the way up and still support the track uh, I'm going to leave it open at the end so I can run the run the carriage in and out for maintenance. Uh, might sort of put a bolt stop or something just to stop it coming out if need be. And then uh, and then just on these supports, just weld a couple of couple of webs, little angle webs between there and the side of the uh, angle iron to uh, stop it bending out. So that's the plan anyway. Also all the materials cut, so I've just got to drill the holes for these two supports and the end plate and then um, move on to uh, weld it up. Always hang on to your offcuts, they always come in handy. The little webs on the side of the uh, of the track, I just had these offcuts, just cut these off so I had ended up with some little triangular webs for each side. So I drilled some mounting holes through the angle iron for each uh, of the other two mounting points and then um, and then welded them on. Um, yeah, no matter how hard I tried, I, I mean, I bolted it to the table, clamped it, well, went really slowly, tacked, you know, worked my way around it, tried to keep the heat down, but I'm sort of getting, getting to grips with my TIG welder and it, it, it distorts like a bugger. No, no matter how careful you are, you know, I've sort of done tubular handrails and uh, not welded onto, onto notching, notched poles. And, and they look fine, but when you actually look down and by eye, you can see that once it gets past the pole, the, the tube actually gets pulled down. It's quite incredible, the amount of distortion. Um, I was going to use my MIG. Unfortunately, my MIG is buried behind the Riley and three motorbikes. So um, it was easier to use the TIG. So it has ended up with a bit of a, bit of a bow to it. Um, which is, which is okay, it's a bit of an advantage because it's got a natural low point on its run in the middle of the track. So if anything sort of happened to go wrong, you know, you had to let something go, um, it would roll, you know, it had a place to roll to in the middle. Um, uh, that's my excuse anyway. And, uh, and it's sort of kicked up, I'll show you where it's kicked up at, at the very end, there's sort of like a seven inch lead in. And, and it's amazing how, how the uh, angle iron is distorted. Even though I was really careful, I sort of went round and I tacked everything, tacked the weld, uh, sorry, tacked the webs, and then went and tacked the webs on the other side, and then went to the other one, and just sort of, you know, gently worked my way round. Um, but yeah, just just the heat build up from TIG welding because it's more like gas welding, and you've got to warm the warm the metal up before you start putting the welding rod in, rather than MIG where you just 
you go at it and uh, it melts everything all in one go. Um, yeah, so not as straight as I wanted, but so uh, there you go. Let's go and have a look at the uh, finished article. Okay, okay, it's not a true gantry crane because I know you're all yeah, waiting here to have a go. It's a sort of a bridge crane, really, because it's sort of uh, it's supported on two walls. It's not supported on a frame with moving wheels, but it, it's nearly there. It's nearly there. So let's go and have a look. As I was saying earlier, my lovely MIG welders buried over there, and um, and the and the reason for all this sort of elaborate engineering is because you can see there's two bikes there, and then this is you know bench space car no space so this is why i needed to have something that i could lift up here move along and drop down yeah and there's just no room for a hydraulic engine hoist so here it is finally finished uh this is not holding it up i've just been using this as a stop which are quite handy but so it runs all the way along, supported here with extra webbing. And these, these webbings, welding these up, this is what caused the distortion. There's a slight bow in it, just a little bit. I have jacked it up a bit in the middle. But as I said, I'd rather have a little bow in the middle here, which sort of falls just, just around here, rather than it sort of, you know, possibly a bit running to the end of the track. And uh, yeah, you've got windscreen and fuel tank and all that going on there but and this is a distortion I don't know if you can see let me have a look it doesn't really show yes it, you can sort of see there is a this one goes up you know a good hang on see if I can find a straight edge bear with there you go can you see that so it's a natural it's a natural uh, stop that's what I'm calling it and you just slide slide the Trolley on there, she moves nicely backwards and forwards, and then let me put the camera down and uh, hook the uh, hoist on. So initially I tried it with, a, I've got a 56 pound weight, so I thought I'll give that a go. So I uh, hauled that up and tried it. And as you can see, that went okay, except I had the camera in the wrong way. Um, so let's try the, uh, the Riley engine, the main reason for building it, and see if we can lift it and see if it'll move. At the moment, I'll just put a clamp up here just to stop it sliding if it wants to go. And there is a little engineer's clamp at the end to act as a stop. So off we go. Not the nicest hoist. Buy cheap, buy twice. That's what my nan always said. Mind you, that was normally with sherry. Right, there we go. And that's nice and stable there. Park the chain up out of the way. Is I'll just put that there, just so it doesn't run away, and then hopefully. Simple as that. When I think of all the struggling I've done to get it out. So I can move the engine around, move it backwards and forwards if I need to, bring it back out of the way. Oh, there we go. And then back over the table and drop it back down.
there we go back on the bench so there you go complete a successful little workshop project and uh, i think it'll prove really useful actually so no more excuses next video engine back in the riley as i said before it's not going to go wrong it's going to go perfect um yeah so if you enjoyed the video give us a little like and uh, sort of uh, and if you want to subscribe because you'll know that there'll be more video content coming along so the next video will be engine back in the riley but i might sort of dig one of the mopeds out just for you know a change is as good as a rest as they say and um yeah the poor little thing hasn't hasn't seen the light of day well since sort of lockdown really so um might be worth getting that out okay so until next time cheerio and um what's that then yeah i'm off to buy two cheap bottles of sherry see you next time